you can travel faster than light in a medium where light travels with a lower speed than it would in a vacuum. In this video, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and co-host Chuck Nice talk about whether or not faster than light travel is possible. And I have to admit, Neil deGrasse Tyson does a great job of explaining these complex issues with a lot of fun and sci-fi in there. This one still leaves me scratching my head, and I think Chuck Nice is on my team. He he doesn't look 100% up to speed by the end of it, but uh, let's take a look at this together. I'm going to try and keep my mouth shut, and uh, then we're going to ask you what you think in the comments. Chuck, yeah. Have you ever wanted to travel faster than light? Sure. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, I spent countless hours just sitting around saying to myself, I wish I could go to like Proxima B and just float above it and be there. You may know that Voyager 1 is the fastest thing we've ever sent out of the solar system. Right. If we had aimed that towards Alpha Centauri, uh -huh. the star system that contains Proxima, the very closest star to the sun, right? you would get there in plus or minus a few months 70,000 years. <laughs> but even if you went there at the speed of light, we would watch you take four years. Your time would stop. Right. So you would get there instantly. But you want to cross the galaxy, that's 100,000 years. Earth time for you to do that. So we need other ways to travel. We know experimentally and theoretically that you cannot travel faster than light. Right. Through space. Right. However, some decades ago, someone hypothesized Suppose you don't increase your speed to try to get to the speed of light. Suppose you exist on the other side of that boundary. You just start life on the other side of that boundary. What would that be? What would, does that even mean? Okay? So if you look at the equations of relativity, there are three things that happen as you travel faster. Your time slows down as you near the speed of light. Right. Your length shortens okay. in the direction of your motion, and your your mass increases. Okay. If you try to get to the speed of light as a physical object, your length shortens to zero, your mass, mass goes to infinity, and time stops. Okay, this is just insane. This is insane. Because the equations blow up there. That's the numbers, right? Okay, that's what the numbers give you. All right. right. So... It was hypothesized, suppose you come at it from the other side. So you're not working your way towards the speed of light. You just exist with speeds that are already faster than the speed of light. So you don't have this violation of approaching the speed of light itself. Okay. When you do that, what comes out the other side is that you live backwards in time. Oh, that's a Benjamin Button. Okay, so it's not just that, you know, time slows down. So time now goes backwards, A. B, the slowest you can travel is the speed, the speed of, light. of light. All right. And in fact, it would take infinite energy to slow you down to that speed. Right. In the same way, it would take infinite energy to speed you on this side of that universe. To speed you up to the speed of light. Infinite energy to speed you up to that speed. Right. So someone said, could anything exist there? And so we came up with it. We people decades ago came up with the name tachyons, and that's because they dress poorly. Tachy, <laughs> they just <laughs> mixing stripes and polka dots and all kinds of madness. But electrons and protons, they're badass. Electrons and protons, they GQ to the max. <laughs> <laughs> tachyons don't invite them to the yeah, party. Yeah, of course they'll come late. Or right. they'll come early. They don't, know, they, don't right. they don't even know when to show up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you want? I'm on tachyon time, brother. Tachyos from the Greek is a word for speed. Okay. So tachyons, the slowest they can go is the speed of light, and the fastest they can go is infinite speed. Right, yeah. So in that case, you can go any distance. You can go any distance in, you want. Any amount of time. Right, because you, at, at that point, you don't need a warp engine. You need a tachyon you engine. You need a tachyon. Tachyon. Uh, a, a propulsion. A, a tachyon chariot. To carry That's you through nice. the galaxy. Well, look yeah. at that. Well, you made it very poetic. And <laughs> it's the vehicle of the Greek gods. <laughs> I'm not sure if that conveyance is supposed to be a tachyon, why they decided to make it look a little bit like a rainbow suppository. But Here's an interesting fact, uh, that the early universe expanded faster than the speed of light. Right. Okay. Now, the way that happened was, 
the space itself is expanding. Right. Nothing is moving through Nothing's space. Nothing's moving through space. Right. right. And so space is no longer a medium. It's the actual vehicle. The medium through which you're moving, it is the thing itself. It's the thing that's moving. And there's no, that's, there's no violation of the speed of light there. And we learned that from the general theory of relativity, which generalizes all of the parameters for which there were very specific uh, descriptions in the special theory of relativity. Right. In other words, the special theory of relativity involved uh, constant motion with no acceleration. So it was a simplified case, uh, if we can call relativity simple at all. It's the simplified case. The general relativity involves accelerations and gravity and curved space-time and all the rest of this. Right. When you learn about space and time as a fabric of the universe, it can stretch at any speed at all. And the early universe stretches faster than light. So that's where that's coming in. Right. Okay? In case there was a question about it. Yeah. But now, it turns out you can travel faster than light in a medium where light travels with a lower speed than it would in a vacuum. Okay. So, like water going, like water, 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 light going through water, light going through glass, light going through diamond, all travel slower than light going through a vacuum. Gotcha. Those lower speeds, hey, we can go fast. We know how to send particles faster than those speeds. We do that all the time. When we accelerate electrons and protons in particle accelerator. So, in a diamond, light travels. 40% as fast as it does in empty space. Wow. If light were 60, 60 miles an hour, in a diamond, light's going 24 miles an hour. Right. So what happens now if we send a particle faster than light in the medium? We didn't know, and it was tested. And we found out that when that happens... The whole universe explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything disintegrates like a Thanos snap. <laughs> <laughs> so you have water and so now you take a particle and accelerate it not only to the speed of light in water but exceeding it and when that happens there's a flash of light uh, it's called in that case Cherenkov radiation Cherenkov radiation the speed of light would be faster in air but still slower, slower than, than, the than the vacuum of space right. so air is less right. dense than water right. water is less dense than diamond right. okay so, so we're, we're getting then, slow light when it hits our atmosphere and comes down to It's us. already slowed down. It's yeah. already slowed down. It's already slowed down. So it bends in the atmosphere, then it bends again going into the water. If you have a diamond ring underwater, it bends going into the diamond ring. Wow. So you got to, you know, get a four, four bend path on that. So my point is going faster than light triggers this reaction between the charged particle, electron and proton, and the medium and flashes of blue light come out. And it's called Cherenkov radiation. We should just Cherenkov light, All right. uh, just to be simple. All light is radiation. So exactly. It scares people. It was radiation. Oh, my yeah, God. No, yeah. But it, um, yeah, you're it, being bombarded with radiation every single day, all day. Correct. It's just low energy radiation. Your arms don't fall off, right? right. Okay. Right. High energy radiation that is ionizing, that's bad for you. Low energy radiation, it, may, it makes no difference to your body. Your body doesn't care. Exactly. So... This thing about going faster than light and then emitting this energy is kind of like a sonic boom, right? I mean, it's it's conceptually similar. You go faster than sound in the medium, then there's this shockwave that comes right. out uh, upon doing so. So think of it as kind of a light shockwave. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know what will just bypass tachyons? What's that? Wormholes. Of course, yes. If you have wormholes, you don't need rockets. You don't need transporters like what they have on Star Trek. Right. Just open a portal, step through, you're there. There you go. You don't have to be dematerialized, beamed, and then rematerialized on the other side. All right. And not only that, that material, I think, only goes at the speed of light. You're still limited by the speed of light, even when they do beam. Right. All right, that's all I got for you. All right. Wait, wait, wait. This is where they lose me, right? So so you talk about the, the light equivalent of the sonic boom, cool. You talk about wormholes, but you're still limited to cool. That's all I got for you? So no. So can you go faster than speed of light? Effectively, no. Yes, if you're passing it through a material, which is dope. I didn't know that. But in terms of Star Trek, bippity-boo, no, we can't. We, I guess not. This is the most time we've ever spent about talking about something that we don't know exists. That, that we don't know exists. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. There it is.
All right, Chuck. All right. There's been another Star Talk explainer, this one on Tachium. A lot of fun. And all things faster than light. Until next time, keep looking up. Look, I'm a fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson and Chuck Nice and the Star Talk channel, but I have to admit this one left me feeling a little bit disappointed. I'm like, what? come on, man. I want to know how we're going to get to Alpha Centauri, how we're going to do that. And uh, instead, it was a little bit like, here's what a tachyon. Okay, cool. I mean, that's cool. I like new information. I like knowledge. But um, I'm like the little sci-fi nerd in me is like, oh, let me know what you think in the comments.